All right. So today I'm going to show how to scrape a website, and this will be just about the most basic website you can scrape. I'm trying to get data for DraftKings for Daily Fantasy, so I can figure out how players have done in the past, so how many points like an NFL player scored, and then how much he would have cost on DraftKings, so I can help build some models, so maybe I can win one day on this website. So I did some searching, and I found this website, Roto Guru. And um, here's the general format. I'm going to do a side-by-side -side walkthrough of me coding and going through this website to scrape it. So if we look at this, um, we can see it's nicely laid out into a table format, which is great for scraping. And um, one thing I always like to do when I'm trying to scrape a website is see what tags are available on the site. So if I were to try to scrape this myself, I would look at um, all this data here that's in the table attribute or the table uh, markup tag, I mean. And um, in here, I can maybe extract the headers. So that comes from this this table row here. I can see all the names of the headers and get all these values below. But luckily for us, this uh, website was actually really nice, and they created um, a semicolon delimited text format. And they don't let you download it, but they give it to you in a website format. And I'm going to show how to scrape that real basically. So I just clicked that link and now we can see a new format for our data. This will be a little easier for our system to parse. And um, I'm just going to right click again, go to inspect element, and then I'll see what the data looks like. So now I can see it's all contained in this pre-tag here. And it looks like if I could just grab this big string blob, I would have all the data for week 17 and year 2016 for DraftKings. So, now that I've identified that I can scrape a single page, the next thing to do is to um, look at extracting all the information. Because it's no good if we have to put in a different URL for each link or we can't get this data like this. So what I'm going to do is just pay attention to how the website generated this. So I'm just looking at the URL now. And I can see at the top they have week equals 17, game equals DK, SCSB. I'm not sure what the S in front of CSB stands for, maybe semicolon. And then, um, yeah, so if I wanted to get week 16, presumably I could just change that to a 16. And sure enough, the website works, returns week 16. Um, so that's great, I can get a whole year's worth of data. But now I want to see if I can get um, maybe 2015's data. So I'm just going to keep using the site and see if it shows me how to get 2015. So I'm just going to click 2015 now. And it looks like I have the same data, but now I'm back to that more HTML format. And I'm going to click for the, the semicolon again. Yep, looks like I have year 2015 new. And it looks like um, at the top with the URL, um, there's a new parameter, year equals 2015. That's been added to the search bar. So maybe if I put 2016, yep, I'll get 2016. And 2014, I'll get 2014. Now I already did some digging and I can tell that 2013 does not work, nor does 2017. So if I want to get data for DraftKings on those years, I'm going to need to identify another source. But already this is pretty useful and I'm going to go ahead and download it. So the way I work with everything is I use Jupyter Notebooks to write Python code interactively and allow me to refine my model. So first I do it for one page and then I abstract that out to stick for all the whole website and get all the information I need. So I'm just going to copy some standard imports I do and create a new notebook. This is using Python 3. Um, I'll just talk about a few things here. I have some standard utils I've put in this basic project. It's a, a PyCharm project for extracting sports data. And I just tell my, my um, Python session here to use um, libraries that come from that path first before going anywhere else. And feel free to ask me questions about this in the comments. I also have utils to use um, the beautiful soup library in Python and to write data frames, so the, the Python representation of like a table in this library called Pandas. I'm writing those nicely into a SQL database. So those are the two utils of uh, libraries here. And then I also have an argument to display all of the columns in a data frame so they don't get cut off when I'm uh, analyzing things here. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is um, get the base URL of the website. Because I'll just write a 
script that'll try all the URLs and all the leaks in the NFL to get all the data. So I'm going to go to year 2014, make that my base, copy and paste that into my um, Jupyter notebook here. There's a few different ways um, you can go about this. Sometimes um, um, I'll maybe leave off this whole param string and generate it myself. But since this is relatively simple, I'm just going to put in some sort of placement keywords like week and year that I'll replace every time I iter iterate through to grab a new URL then. There's my base URL. Um, next up, I'm going to generate all the years and weeks that I should be parsing. So I'll start with weeks. Um, I'm just going to create a list. Um, this is one. You know Python this is really basic, but I'm just making sure you know that 18 is a non-inclusive upper bound. So this is going to grab every week from 1 to 17. Years range from, I believe it was 2014 to 2016. Again, non-inclusive upper bound. So that determines uh, sort of the basic config for my um, scrape here. Next up, I'm going to write the, the main control loop to get the data. And when I write these things, I try to make it so it's already parameterized. So later on when I decide to maybe make, make it into a function call or make the scraping operation um, use like a for loop to do all the URLs I should be grabbing, um, I sort of put in the variable ahead of time. So I'm going to call this week, and then I'm going to say week one, and then year, I'm going to say year 2014. And then I'm going to do a utils.soup. So this is just going to call the beautiful soup, um, soup function to um, first grab the URL and then try to convert it into beautiful soup sort of like parsing language so I can extract information inside the different markup tags. So I'm just going to put in the base URL and then I'm going to put in the week. And there's probably more efficient ways to do this, but this is a really simple script. Uh, so I'll replace week from above with my variable wk, and then I'll do another replace operation for year. So then year, I'll replace that with year. And here we go. You should get a huge blob of uh, HTML. Yep, here it is. So this is what the website looks like when um, your browser opens it and then um, there's the data inside of here. So I'm just going to redefine this variable as soup and go back to the website. Now I just want to see where the data is again. And it looks like it's in a pre-tag. So I don't really see pre-tags too often. So I'm just going to use the find method in beautiful soup and see if that works to get this data here. So here we go, soup.find pre. Sure enough, there's all the data. And this is really nice because the author of this website thought of scrapers and thought of people who might be copy and pasting this maybe into Excel or other more basic programs. And, uh, yeah, created this for us so we didn't have to do a little bit more intensive scraping. Now I'm just going to extract the text from it. And now I have my big blob that I can then turn into a famous data frame. So this is the uh, basic control loop. Um, I'm just going to finish off the part where I actually add this um, this week of data to the pandas data frame. I'll show you what that looks like. So um, I had to look this up. I was doing something similar earlier. But um, I'll show now how to use pandas to read this data. Pandas has the function to read a CSV. And if you look at this, um, I don't think it's as use functionality, but you can actually read string blobs into Python or into pandas. So you don't you can use read CSV to read a string as well as reading a file. And the way you do that is by using the IO library in Python. In just a moment here, I'm gonna import IO and then do IO.string IO. So now I created kind of like a file, but um in Python, I don't know all the nuances of this, but if I do pd read csv, um, there's my data. And the last thing I have to do is go back to the documentation, figure out how to tell 
And I noticed that this isn't a CSV, it's actually a semicolon separated file. So if I go here, here's set. So if I say set semicolon, that should work. Alright, perfect. And you can see all the data. Um, looks like I have a full week. Week 1, 2014. Here's all the player names. Um, we got about 418. Yeah. So it looks pretty good to me. Um, now I'm going to change the script to um, go through all the web pages and then save the information. I'm just going to take this. I'm going to move the IO block up here just so it's always in my first line of imports. And this is my basic function to create a data frame. So this will be like um, weeks, um, let's say, um, wheat scrape, I guess. Not the best name, but uh, it's an A. So I'm going to have a local variable, which will be like every week scrape. And then I'm going to add that to a global uh, variable. So I'm going to create a data frame here. I'm just going to call it scrape. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll rename this to ETF uh, PD data frame. Then what you can do here is um, just use pandas concatenation function. So we'll just um, do scrape df equals pd.concat. This takes in a list of tables, data frames, whatever you want to call them. So I'll put in scrape df and then the weak df. Or df stands for data frame here. So I have my basic um, loop set up, but I've hard coded week and year. So all that's left is for me to change this into um, an iterator. So I am just going to do for year and years. Notice that I use the exact same variable name that I used before. And then I'm going to do for week and weeks. So now this should go through all the weeks and years I set up above. And then it will create the scraping again. Um, when I'm done, I just want to see what the data frame looks like. And uh, yeah, it should be good. The only last change here is um, I'll just run it so you can see the error. Yep, so when I created my list of integers, um, there's an issue with using the replace function in Python with an integer replacing a string. A few different ways to solve that. I'm just going to turn this into um, a little bit of a funky thing here, but I'm just mapping every integer value in the list to a string with a string function, and then I am turning that into a list. Um, I won't really explain why, it just... Uh, you can ask me in the comments if you do care about that part. Just sort of a nuance with how Python iterates through maps and lists differently. Alright, so here we go. Alright, and I'll talk a little bit um, about my utils.soup function. All I really do there is I create a custom header to request the website. So I try to tell the website I'm a browser instead of a robot which may be a little unethical, but that's yeah, okay, I think, if you do it respectfully. Um, and then I have a random sleep function that waits um, somewhere in the realm of two to eight seconds between requests, sort of to be respectful and not take down the website with like a flood of traffic out of nowhere. Um, you could parallelize this um, function, but for the small scope of um, this poll, there's really, there's really no need for that. Um, the only other thing that goes on here is you'll notice that week one was never straight, so you never see a URL for week one here. And that's because my utils.soup function um, defaultly stores a, a pull of the website in its cache. That way if you're refining this and you find there's a small bug on maybe um, year 2016, you don't have to go all the way back and re-pull from the website, wasting that server's resources and your time because the request of the server can take the longest out of a lot of the scraping tasks you'll do. So that's all that's really going on there. And, uh, yeah. So I'll cut away um, when I edit this and then uh, check back when the whole script's done.
All right. Looks like everything's great and um, looks pretty good here. Um, let me just do some data quality checks real quick to make sure I actually got all the data that we need. First glance looks like it. So here's my scrape DF, and you can just sort of pet it if you can't file in Unix. I'm just looking at the first five rows here. Looks just like I'd expect. Now I'm just going to use a simple um, group by function in Pandas to look at all the years and weeks to make sure the values look about right. So I'm going to group by year, group by week, and then my aggregation function will just be to count. So I'm just going to count how many are in each um, sort of like a week bucket of salaries from DraftKings. Here we go. Um, looks like I can see 418. Okay, so I have 2014. Here's all the weeks. Here's counts of all these things in each one. Um, you'd expect the first, uh, what is the first three in football to be roughly um, similar numbers, but then once you get to um, bye weeks, you might see a dip in the NFL season. So that's why you see like four through 10, 11, 12 that are a little bit lower. But then the bye weeks are all over through weeks 13 to 17. So that's why there's that little dip there. Um, scrolling down, you should see the same phenomena. Um, yeah, and everything looks good. So um, that concludes how to scrape a basic website. Maybe in a follow-up video, I'll talk about more complicated, complicated websites where you have to first extract what pages to scrape and then go ahead and scrape them. It can be a little bit more of a two-tiered approach. But yeah, that's the gist of it. Um, you essentially find data that exists in HTML tags and try to figure out a way to render the pages appropriately. Thanks for watching.